3.30. Uh, I'm with Lorraine Lauder and Brian Sow, who are from Water with Blessings. And they're gonna tell us of how to use GIS to create, create connections and accountability from, for donors. Uh, without further ado, oh, uh, I, d I do wanna say, you know, don't turn on your cameras, uh, save the bandwidth. Uh, any, any questions that you have, uh, just go ahead and put it in the, in the chat window. No, no interrupting, no uh, raising hands or anything like that. And without further ado, let, let's get um, with Lorraine and Brian, and you guys can take it away. Thank you. Thanks. So we can go to screen sharing now. And hi, everybody. Thank you. Um, whoops. But somehow... I got halfway through our presentation. So let me roll back. Okay. Um, I'm Lorraine Lauder with Water with Blessings. I'm the executive director. And Brian here, Brian Shaw, is our GIS uh, specialist. And uh, GIS, we've been working with GIS for several years. And as a nonprofit, uh, at first it was quite a challenge for us. And it's become very integral to our uh, entire experience, very integral to um, our mission. And so we're just here today to share about that and talk about that. And I understand we have, is it, am I correct, 25 minutes? Mm. Somebody could stop me. I'm not getting any yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a five minute one. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Okay, so uh, first of all, what Water with Blessings is. We are a nonprofit of 501c3, and our mission is to equip mothers with household water filtration systems. And we put those in their hands, and then we also equip or empower them as what we call water women. We have over 136,000 water women around the world in 48 countries, uh, wherever children are endangered by dirty water. And uh, we've been doing that work the field experience is not about GIS. The field experience with the filters, about 13 years um, in all these countries across the globe. So um, a lot of experience in the water world. And four years of GIS experience. We're going to talk a little later about how we got into that. But um, as I said, GIS has become really central to our mission and what we do. So um, how we got started in 2017, um, before August 2017, actually, I personally had never heard of GIS. Brian was an intern, a student intern from University of Louisville. I'm not sure he'd ever heard of GIS either. Um, and I went down to visit the manufacturers of the filter we use, which is right down here at the bottom of the screen, the Sawyer 0.1 filter, which is a fantastic filter that is top of its class in terms of uh, water filtration for any biohazards or biocontaminants. And as I said you know, earlier, we've been using these for over 10 years at that point. So in 2017, I met with the founder of this company, and he said, I'm going to introduce you to GIS, and uh, it's going to enhance your mission. Now, he sells both for-profit and to all kinds of nonprofits. This particular filter is distributed all over the world by everybody up to the Red Cross. Um, so he tied in a rebate for we get $1 of GIS credit, service credit, um, for every filter that we buy. He had a lot of reasons he wanted to do that. He wanted to see his nonprofit partners start um, demonstrating, um, uh, you know, impact and demonstrating the efficacy of the filter itself, although that was very well proven. By that point, I think they themselves had over 200,000 data sets for that. But I uh, wanted the nonprofits to get involved and primarily because He's working with a lot of different nonprofits who use different methodology in the distribution of the filter. So while we knew, first of all, that clean water, we don't need to really collect more data to prove that clean water improves health. And we don't need more data really, or they don't, to prove that the Sawyer 0.1 filter lasts for 3 million gallons or more and is very um, 
very reliable and can be used by everyone. It works by gravity. It, as I said, it's guaranteed for 3 million gallons. But also that the methodology behind the distribution, that's really, really key. And so we got this incentive rebate. So it's basically use it or lose it. And um, I'm pretty thrifty. So we got into using it. So um, here we have a picture of uh, the way we used to do things. So why nonprofits should use GIS? This uh, woman up here in the pink striped shirt who's been standing there waiting patiently a long time kind of captures the experience of the recipients, of the beneficiaries who are waiting there for people to fill out pen and paper, just the registrations. We have always registered every mother who's in the program. This is a program for mothers. We have always gotten a, at least a pen and paper registration, but not much more. And even that was pretty burdensome for both the trainers. So you see these two trainers at the table. I think this is in Haiti. And um, for the participants. So here's a picture of the experience now. At the end of training, everyone lines up and one of our uh, trainers, who is also a Haitian here on the left of the screen, is um, collecting the barcode on that filter. She's going to get the picture of that water woman and she's going to get um, basic data on her. We'll come back to that. But you know, that's a big difference between this picture and this picture. So, how nonprofits can use GIS? Um, first of all, you know, we have set out four areas here when Brian and I planned this. So um, needs assessment, which we ourselves do not get into a lot because, you know, we, the, the need of, um, for clean water is a given. Um, however, and, and we work, we have a different methodology for getting out there, but a lot of nonprofits, and we work with some nonprofits, we've helped get started in GIS, and they use it for needs assessment. So prior to doing any distribution or programming or, or uh, you know, whatever the, the process is, getting out there and assessing need. Doing the actual distribution, so tracking progress and accountability for the progress doing follow-up data, which was really the first thing that the founder of the filter company had in mind, uh, that's Kurt Avery, and then also accountability to donors and funders, which is kind of the additional piece we want to focus on here that, that we'll be adding. Um, in needs assessment, um, getting you know, a read on the population demographics and what solutions are needed in an area and how many people need those. And also creating ways to collect and assess input from the population and leadership. I was talking a few moments before we started with Andrew about the need for um, uh, more connectivity in the Navajo Nation, which is uh, very, very underserved in terms of good connectivity, as they found out trying, when they started trying to educate uh, people online and then you know, with 2020, and then also you know, programs like us trying to figure out how to pursue our programming with very little or no connectivity in vast parts of the, of the country. Um, and as well then realizing that when and the Navajo Nation, when they're applying for grants, for example, for special programs, government programs or whatnot, that they're still largely using pen and paper. And so we help them set up a needs assessment survey that assesses all the things that they identified they need to assess. It's just one brief example there. For us, a lot of this starts with distribution itself um, and managing all of that. So first, of course, obviously we have inventory. And we're constantly kind of tweaking this and we're about to do a new inventory setup there. Um, but just tracking what we're shipping out, when it's arriving, how much of it is on the shelf, what's going out. Uh, for an operation like ours where we're 
we're actually, you know, using tangible, distributing tangible objects, there's a lot of inventory that's important. And then when we're deploying, when we're distributing, so we want to be able to demonstrate to everyone who's got any kind of stake in this at all, where those benefits are being distributed, the benefits in our case being filters, when are the filters being distributed, who is receiving them, how many people are receiving them, and how many are benefiting. So in our case, the women that we are equipping are um, making a, a promise that they will filter for three other families besides their own. So we're looking at things like what's the average household size, multiplying that by four because each filter is serving four families. Um, and then from that getting at least a reasonable estimate of how many people each filter is um, actually affecting. Um, and then also other data that we found helpful and useful and interesting, like age and household size and all of that. I will put in here something that we can put on a slide, which is we do have concerns for privacy issues. And so any data that is shared beyond our central office here is not shared with the woman's full name. And we'll come back to that. Uh, Brian, did you have something to add to this piece here? I think you have it on the hammer on the nail. Okay. Um, All right, jump in because I don't want to run over you there. Um, so then with distribution, oops, that's where we are. Okay. Um, with program accountability, we have another aspect as well. And that has to do with, we have a very structured program so that we have success in the mission. We're going for sustainability, we're going for impact. Sustainability means, meaning we'll come on to this more later, the impact is going on beyond the initial impact. Um, so we have very strong trainings, um, protocol, program standards. We also have um, adapted some survey usage to deal with things like are our staff being properly compensated? Meaning our staff uh, in Haiti, for example, um, all get stipends for the work they're doing. Not really on salary, but they get stipended for each day that they're working. And we've been able to set up special surveys just to track the distribution of those stipends. So if anyone's paid something in cash, in Haiti we have to pay in cash, then we have a survey where they, you know, we have a signature field, we have their photograph, you know, the signature of the person who handed over the cash, how much it was, all of that. So we've been pretty creative with how we use the survey tools to, um, to hit a lot of other aspects of our, of our program. You know, and again, we, it's very important that the inventory be well managed the um, materials that we're distributing are not inexpensive. And so, you know, it's really integral that we know how much inventory is out there and, and where it's gone. Follow-up data and assessment. This is really Brian's area. You want to talk about this, Brian? Oh, well, uh, follow-up and data assessment. So what we're just trying to say, uh, we always know sort of the uh, in your sense, we always know the uh, qualitative, some of the uh, qualitative traits, but we always, uh, I know uh, communities, we want to know the numbers. Uh, we like, num we love numbers here at Water with Blessings, uh, some of the kind of viable uh, uh, traits. Mm -hmm. um, so I think our goal is always to say uh, um, just a, a sense of transparency. Mm -hmm. um, for the communities we do serve here, uh, like uh, here in the US for like Navajo Nation and other countries like Haiti and Honduras. Um, and so the goal is always like, uh, are the number, a little bit of like, are we serving numbers mm -hmm. uh, well? And I kind of sort of check the numbers to see are the numbers uh, lining up? Because I know that our, uh, so far we've had general about four to five people in an 
average household family. Um, so I kind of checked to see the method of like, oh, is there within uh, a certain margin of four to five family members or there uh, within every community water women training? Uh, we do 15 uh, water women training of 15. Mm -hmm. 15 uh, women per, per training. Uh -huh. um, so it's, I kind of see that, oh, are they just putting uh, rent, uh, like just consistently maybe one person for every one woman or just uh, mm -hmm. the average uh, mm -hmm. there so we can share transparency. Yeah, we're checking like each day are the uh, numbers adding up, the numbers, you know, because we're deploying a team. This is almost military. In fact, our in Haiti, our country coordinator is ex-U.S. military. He's he's actually here in the U.S. and been managing all that from a distance. Um, and so we are deploying a team, and they are responsible for training a certain number of women per day. And Brian, every morning, is verifying that, is checking all of that. And he's also really good at catching anomalies. Um, which are usually something like um, maybe a, a label was on sideways and it couldn't catch the barcode, um, or maybe someone you know punch send, but well, she only send once. But some some kind of anomaly. We don't, we found this is really great for accountability with teams who are out in the field, um, and um, at the same time, you know, we have to account for a little bit of things like um, sometimes a you know a, a, apparently a the satellite goes behind a cloud and somebody's training location is uh, out in the middle of the Caribbean instead of on the island. But those are pretty rare. Um, so, you know, in terms of overall, we want to look at where our goals achieved and will our goals continue to be achieved. So our, our goal is not just, actually our primary goal is not good distribution of these filters. A primary goal is that people are drinking clean water for many years to come, because with proper care, these filters will last for at least 10 years. And we've had that happen. You know, we've been able to anecdotally before GIS check it and check up on all that, but not, you know, with actual data. And I like this combination here of this photo and this um, little graphic illustration here, because I think it's really important, and we talk about this a lot at Water with Blessings, that the numbers are really important to us, but we never lose sight of the women. And actually the way our surveys are set up, um, you know, we always say, and we say to the women in the training, you know, we're going to, we know your name. These are women who never thought they might be known or considered um, known by anybody outside of their own very small remote community. Like for example, this group here, I think it's in the Ivory Coast. Um, but with our program, they're going to be part of a worldwide movement and they're going to be known to us. And um, we actually also promise to pray for them every day. And it, it Actually, ironically, in a sense, it means that we take this concept of collecting data and we use it to personalize that experience. It's a far more personal experience now. We'll talk about that a little more with donors here in a second. A couple of seconds. Um, so we're actually able to be very accountable to our donors and funders. Um, more and more people want to know exactly where did my donation go. Let's see if I could switch over to our website here. Um, let's see if I can get out. Whoops. I may have to just open this up. Here we go. So here's our website. And uh, there's our lead page. But then we're able to go here. Let me show you again here just a second. Over here, you see in this bar across the top, see your impact. Any donor can go over here to see your impact. And here's our, our GIS um, map embedded. And we can turn this off here and we can put in, I think, 
Let's see, number 1789. So all of our donors have, come on. Sorry, it doesn't want to let me in. I'm having to refresh just a moment, please. All of our donors have a four digit code. And this is a problem of presenting on Zoom. When they put in that code, the specific water women that their sponsorship went to pop up on the map. Let's see if I can get that to work now. Yeah, it's kind of dead in the water here. Yeah, I think because of, let's try one more time. So we can read. So this is one of our donating churches. There we go. And we're populating very slowly. And I'm gonna go on and zoom in here. Theirs will show up in a second. Try this one more time. Let's try a different. Okay, here we go. So we see this one little water woman logo popping up here in northern Haiti. And of course, as you all know, we start zooming in and we see more dots on the map. This is an area called Limonade. And the very, very many water women that these people have sponsored over the years are, you know, all of their uh, information is there. So again, that donor goes to the map, to our website, excuse me, clicks for see your impact, inputs right over here, their donor ID, and much more quickly than happened today on Zoom, uh, the water women that they sponsored show up there. We're also able to, um, for donors of uh, a, larger a larger scale, they get their own dashboards as well. I don't think we didn't get a dashboard together for this. It'd be a donor dashboard. But I'll show you a little bit more of that here in a second. So let's see. And if anybody has any um, questions at this point, I think we'll close it in on our, our time. We've gone faster. Um, then we're able to give special report formats out. Sometimes there's, you know, like this little poster here for a school. Uh, sometimes there's special mementos, um, like, you know, we give out bookmarks with, uh, you know, each water woman sponsored. Again, just first names. Uh, those are called prayer bookmarks. Um, Brian, you were going to talk a little bit about some of the special developmental challenges we had in, in putting all this into uh, the play. Yes, yes. Um, so it's some of our GIS. Uh, on this slide, I know that uh, I know as we our headquarters, we are uh, we have to be very conscious of the language we use for the questions because it might. Uh, the questions might not always translate the same to other cultures. And I'm mm -hmm. uh, for uh, to Haiti, to Honduras, to Uganda, to the Philippines. Um, I think so this, we all, we're always con uh, very conscious about what the, what are the conscious, what are the cultural. Question, cultural questions we should be aware of? Because we, uh, we're all, always, we're about the mothers, it's very personal. Mm -hmm. um, and I also know that uh, recently, within the last few months, because of the, uh, we we're using another software just for some uh, donor matches. And then the, the technology of like, oh, the accent mark, because mm -hmm. I know some of the survey, uh, 
Uh, it didn't get translated because oftentimes uh, uh, the platform was like, oh, this, we're only use, uh, using it in English, but mm -hmm. in Spanish or Haitian Creole, they have an accent mark. So it's just, I think that was one of the things I like, ended up noticing of like uh, the software. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm learning more about the software about that. Mm -hmm. um, I also know uh, with technology in Ecuador and Honduras, uh, since we are using surveys on phones, Samsung is better in those two countries and Androids are better uh, for within Haiti, mm -hmm. which I find was like, I, I, it's very interesting just to see that. And We're not then, sure why. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. in the US, uh, it seems to be like Apple mm -hmm. iPhones are maybe the best if we were at a conference or if we're doing other surveys here locally yeah so and then solar chargers we we've, we've really gotten into the world of solar chargers uh we have a favorite solar charger now that's for sure we buy those pretty often um we also have challenges with um wi-fi obviously as i was speaking with the navajo nation and um you know, just what kind of capacity there is in, say, Uganda or the Ivory Coast or the Philippines or whatever it is. Philippines, actually, no problems there. But you know, we get into, say, remote northern Uganda. Um, we meet some challenges. And then uh, we learned a lot about satellite boosters. But now it seems like the last couple of years, we've not had to use those. So that probably has something to do with the hardware. Um, but I think it also points out, you know, um, part of the uptake challenge, quite frankly, from the beginning was we were trying to get people who felt, who, who were very new to this, to agree to do it and agree to do it every day and agree to do it consistently. And when you're working with people who, um, you know, are already feel themselves at a disadvantage. They're the employee and then, then they are very conscious of having less education. Um, many of our trainers are very undereducated relative to their intelligence. Um, but, you know, we had to overcome some barriers of you won't fail, okay? When people uh, believe they're being set up to fail even unintentionally, they can be resistant to things. And that was a big learning uh, piece for me personally was, um, you know, being patient with that and understanding that we can get there. You know, we had the first few months were rocky out in the you know field in other countries. Um, I think we had team members who hoped that if, you know, we weren't successfully, you know, implementing this, that it would kind of go away. <laughs> But we just kept persisting. And um, after a while, we turned a corner and people began to really understand that being successful at this, first of all, was within well within their grasp. And secondly, that they were going to be able to, um, they were going to be proud, you know, of, of what they were accomplishing. They were going to see the numbers like we were. They were going to see the dots on the map. Um, they were succeeding together as a team in doing this and um, that they could do it very well. And in fact, that it gave them greater credibility in maybe working with other nonprofits or in um, other areas. Um, I'm still, um, we haven't gotten a five minute warning. Andrew, are you there? Uh, I, I said, I. I'd send it to you in chat. Yeah, you're you're at one minute now. Okay. So if you didn't see it. Okay. And are we out of time for questions? Um. Yeah, we can have yeah. time for questions. Okay. Well, we're using Esri. I'll just flip along through here. Our management is through Sparrow Data Solutions. Got a link in there. We could share all these slides, by the way, with anyone who's interested. Um. They've been really fantastic, helped us to uh, connect with Esri as a nonprofit and then be able to get affordable pricing. Uh, we're a pretty small nonprofit. And um, you know, as compared to some of these others here on the screen, 
you know, which is that's a screen share or a, um, you know, grab from their website, from the Sparrow Data Solutions, but they've been great to work with. Um, I already talked about um, you know, everybody is, all the participants, as you see lined up here, are registered with the barcode sticker on the filter and we get their pictures and things like how many children under age five, how many over age five. In our field, the under age, uh, under age five is who dies of dirty water. Um, so that's kind of our uh, core piece of data we're looking for is how many children are we affecting under age five. We have all kinds of surveys set up. We have done some special projects that involve things like scabies. Um, as I said before, receipts for expenses and salaries and whatnot, special needs assessment with the Navajo Nation, special aid distribution. Uh, there's some pretty interesting links here. We've had interns set up story maps. That's been a nice boost for our service learning component. We have a lot of um, high school kids come to us and they want to do some kind of um, special project beyond just your normal yeah. kind of project. And so we love working with them on story maps. Yeah, no, sorry to to cut you off there, Lorraine, we're, we're at four o'clock, but I, I, I do have one question for you. And I'm happy that, I'm sure your donors are, are happy to know where their dollars are being spent. That, that's always in the back of my mind when I, when I donate. Um, are, are you guys worldwide? How, how many countries are you guys are in? Well, it depends on what you call in. We have distributed in 48 countries. So okay. Some through a lot of, you know, much smaller scale with say church partners or what. Our biggest mm -hmm. countries are Haiti, Honduras. Right now, where we're working is Haiti, Honduras, the Philippines, um, Uganda, Zambia, uh, Navajo Nation, some other place I'm forgetting. Kenya. 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 Thank you. Kenya, okay. Uh, per our, um, per all the challenges of COVID. Mm, okay. Well, I'd like to thank Brian and Lorraine for uh, educating us on using GIS to uh, be accountable to donors. Uh, are there any questions? I'm not seeing any. Um, I will say I do not see our next presenter. Um, so we can hang on. Can I go so, back to our slide of pride? <laughs> Um, our triumph. Let me see. Um, is there anybody on the call for Jeff Ledbetter's uh, presentation of everything you need to know about 911? We spoke a few weeks ago. He said he wouldn't be able to make tomorrow's, so he has someone covering for him then. Um, I've emailed and texted. I'm not getting anything back though. So, um, anybody on the the chat or in the in the room from his team? Okay. No. Um, well, Lorraine, I said if you have one more slide, um, go for it. Okay. Um, let's see. Sorry, I got to share. Well, this is relative to our work in Haiti post earthquake. Uh, first of all, we did a lot of coordinating through the U.S. Southern Command. They have a great platform where they bring in after a disaster. Uh, all the players who are making some kind of response, um, we get on Zooms together and just find out who's going where and all of that. And we took, because we had already mapped through our training program a lot of the area prior to the earthquake, we already had that mapped. We put that, uh, just took the data, the uh, GPS points, created a new dashboard and put that out there. And that was picked up by the, the Pacific Disaster Relief Coordination. Um, the Pacific Disaster Center, it's what it's called. It's actually located in Haiti, um, but it's, uh, um, it, it's a pretty cool thing. So they highlighted us on Facebook and we were pretty proud of that. Um, and again, a, a pretty small nonprofit, relatively new to GIS. We're definitely in the realm of novices there, but the Pacific Disaster Center uh, picked us up and highlighted our collaboration with the U.S. Southern Command and uh, 
talked about how we, they integrated their women-focused geospatial data into disaster aware for enhanced situational awareness for NGO and United Nations OCHA partners. So yes, we were quite proud of that. Okay, <laughs> well, thank you uh, very much. Uh, this was very informative. Um, and if anybody has uh, any questions, now's the time to ask them. Yeah, we definitely have time for questions. I haven't heard back um, on Jeff Ledbetter's presentations. There might have been a little uh, misstep there. Um, I sent a message in the chat to see if there's anybody here from his group. Like I said, he uh, wasn't able to do tomorrow, so he had somebody to step in for him. So um, something might have happened. Last presentation of the day. So we got some questions. We got, we got some time for questions, and uh, we can let you all go early and get ready for the social event at five. I want to know everything about 911. Well, you're not not going to see much, unfortunately. <laughs> not, this, not this time. <laughs> Unless you go to the NG911 working groups, uh, which the next one is October. Kim Azell's on here. I'm wanting to say 19th. Oof. I'm going to throw out the wrong date. We'll mention that again tomorrow during the morning session. So if I'm getting my day, yep, October 19th. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Well, I, I'd say it's not too early for a virtual applause for Lorraine and Brian. Thank you. Appreciate the comments. And um, um, also, you know, one thing I should add is that uh, since we're here in Kentucky is we are uh, stepping out into doing some work in Appalachia. And if anyone is, is interested in that and wants to be involved, we'd, uh, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, I know. As you said you were in the Navajo Nation. I was wondering if outside of that, but in the U.S., you guys were uh, helping yeah, we out. Yeah, some disaster relief like in Texas and stuff. Puerto Rico, we did a lot in Puerto Rico. Wasn't there uh, a town in eastern Kentucky that hasn't had clean drinking water for months. Um, I seem to remember a headline of that. Was it yeah, Paintsville? I think Martin, Kentucky is Martin. one. Yeah, Martin. Yeah, that's what we're talking with some people there now because more and more people are turning to natural sources, you know, even like a spring by the side of the road. And- um, Whatever works. Yeah, whatever works. But we can make sure that that is, uh, that they're not drinking E. coli. Yeah. And we can map where they're doing it. Well, you know. Well water, whatever, you know, well water can test beautifully one day and the next it's contaminated. Well, you know, I'm sure people have watched enough survivor shows on Discovery and they got it all figured out. It comes out of the ground. <laughs> all right. Um, Well, Andrew, uh, yeah, I guess we'll call it. Uh, haven't heard back from him, so uh, not bad for a whole day of presentations. Only one uh, misstep. That's not terrible. Um, so it does happen. Um, but uh, you know, if, if he does get back to me and we can scoot him in somewhere else, um, we'll be more than glad to do that. Uh, life happens, but uh, I really appreciate Water with Blessings. That was great. It's always great to see nonprofits getting involved. Um, in GIS, uh, it's a, you know, obviously it's a very powerful tool. We know that. Um, and sometimes these tools can be a bit expensive. Um, so I, it, you know, Ezra is good at it. Other, you know, open source uh, GIS systems are good at it uh, that enable those um, to, uh, to help those in need. So uh, really appreciate it. Really appreciate your interest in camp uh, and presenting for the first time. And we will definitely be having you back if you'll have us. So thank you all very much. Uh, yeah, Tuesday evening socials tonight, the Mapathon at 5 p.m. Um, link is in the agenda. Um, so uh, be there. And um, that is it for our breakout sessions. Sorry again that we couldn't get to our last presentation. Um, but again, we may have some more information on that in the future. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead and end it. Uh, thanks everybody again. And uh, we'll see you tonight at the Mapathon. And if not, tomorrow morning. <laughs>